From humble beginnings as a small UK-based company, to revolutionizing the gaming industry and a subsequent fall from grace, Rare has had an incredibly rich history and legacy of classic games. With the philosophy of making games that people will find enjoyable rather than just to earn profits, a penchant for long, exhausting work hours, and an almost legendary reputation for its secrecy, Rare would achieve massive success throughout the 80s and 90s. Founded originally by Tim and Chris Stamper as the UK-based company Ultimate Play the Game in 1982, the brothers began developing games primarily for the ZX Spectrum, a home computer popular exclusively in the UK. The company's first game, Jetpack, would be a commercial and critical success, leading to the development of other titles such as Attic Attack, Night Lore, and Saberwolf. Eventually seeing the Spectrum as a dead-end console, the Stamper Brothers would move on and rebrand as Rare Limited in 1985. Impressed with Japanese developer Nintendo's newest console, the Famicom, Rare would produce some tech demos for the system, decoding the console that Nintendo had touted as not decodable. Impressed with Rare's efforts, Nintendo granted them an unlimited budget. Rare would go on to develop a number of prolific titles for the NES, including the Wizard and Warrior series, Slalom, Cobra Triangle, and Battletoads. At this time, Rare would also partner with various other developers, such as EA, Tradewest, and even Sega to produce over 60 games for the NES and Game Boy. Rare's output at this time was huge, releasing one game a month for both Nintendo platforms. By 1994, Rare's focus shifted from quantity to quality of output. After showing Nintendo a demo of a boxing game featuring pre-rendered 3D graphics for the Super Nintendo, Nintendo was so impressed by what Rare was able to do with their console that they would go on to purchase a 49% share of the company, officially making Rare a second-party developer for Nintendo. This resulted in Rare rebranding themselves as Rareware. Nintendo also offered Rare one of their lesser franchises to develop in this new pre-rendered graphics style, of which Rare chose Donkey Kong. The release of Donkey Kong Country would become a groundbreaking achievement for console graphics at the time, and by the end of its run became the third highest selling Super NES game, behind only Super Mario World and Super Mario All-Stars. The sequels, Donkey Kong Country 2 Diddy's Conquest and Donkey Kong Country 3 Dixie's Double Trouble, would also become staples of the Super NES era, both building upon and improving the formula of the original. This would particularly be true of Donkey Kong Country 2, which to many is considered the best entry of the series. Around this time, due to Nintendo's financial backing, Rare would be able to expand significantly. In 1994, they released the arcade game, Killer Instinct, building their own 32-bit arcade cabinet for the game. Although originally planned for release on Nintendo's new Ultra 64 console, the game would inevitably be ported onto the Super NES after Nintendo's delay of the new console. Regardless, Killer Instinct was another big hit for Rare, eventually selling over 3 million copies. By the Nintendo 64 era, Rare had become one of the most innovative and respected developers in the world. Their output for the Nintendo 64 is legendary, featuring classic titles such as Donkey Kong 64, Diddy Kong Racing, Perfect Dark, Blast Corps, and Jet Force Gemini. Banjo-Kazooie, released in 1998, was Rare's answer to Super Mario 64, and is often considered the crown jewel of their adventure platformers for the console. Banjo-Kazooie would be a huge success, and its 2000 sequel, Banjo-Tooie, would go on to be even more successful, outselling the first. However, perhaps no other Rare title for the Nintendo 64 was more innovative or more successful than GoldenEye 007. Despite being developed by an unlikely team of newcomers to the company, and being released a couple years after the release of the movie, GoldenEye defied the odds. GoldenEye revolutionized first-person shooters, featuring genre-defining mechanics and gameplay, as well as a totally innovative four-player split-screen mode. GoldenEye was a surprise hit for Rare, and would eventually become one of the most successful Nintendo 64 games. Unfortunately, despite their status as one of the most well-respected and innovative developers in the industry, by the late 90s and early 2000s, Rare's successes were starting to wane. Inner turmoil within the company, resulting in mass resignations, delayed development of some games like Perfect Dark. By the end of the Nintendo 64 lifecycle, titles like Perfect Dark, while innovative and still successful in their own right, fell short of sales expectations. Conker's Bad Fur Day, in particular, was plagued with abysmal sales. With the next generation of consoles, development costs had begun to increase, and the company was starting to face some financial woes. Unfortunately, 
Rare's relationship with Nintendo was also starting to deteriorate. Nintendo had not provided Rare with more capital, nor did they show interest in purchasing the other half of the company, resulting in Rare searching for other opportunities. Activision and Microsoft both approached Rare, but Microsoft would ultimately give the better offer, purchasing the company for an astounding $300 million. Although Nintendo and Rare would part ways, Rare would still develop Star Fox Adventures, released in 2002 for the Nintendo GameCube, as their final release on a Nintendo console. Due to Microsoft not having a stake in the handheld market, they would still permit Rare to release a few games for the Game Boy Advance, such as Banjo-Kazooie, Grunty's Revenge, and It's Mr. Pants, and even into the DS era with the remake of Diddy Kong Racing in 2007. Also as part of their separation with Nintendo, Rare would retain the rights to their original franchises, such as Banjo and Conker, but in turn, Nintendo would retain the rights to their intellectual properties, like Donkey Kong. Rare would also rebrand again as simply Rare, dropping the Rare Rare moniker. Unfortunately for Rare, their problems would not be resolved by their acquisition by Microsoft. Rare's titles for the original Xbox, Grab by Ghoulies and Conquer Live and Reloaded, were both commercial failures. Rare's two Xbox 360 launch titles, Perfect Dark Zero and new IP Cameo Elements of Power, although critically acclaimed and selling over 1 million copies each, were considered disappointing releases. In 2006, Rare would release Viva Piñata, a gardening game inspired by such titles as Harvest Moon and Animal Crossing. Although praised critically for its innovation, the title would ultimately become another commercial disappointment for Rare. At this time, some Rare employees questioned Microsoft's marketing focus of new title, Gears of War, and their relative neglect of Viva Piñata. Finally, in January of 2007, company founders Tim and Chris Stamper would leave the company after over 20 years. By this time, Rare's biggest successes had been long since behind them, and after the release of the disappointing Banjo-Kazooie Nuts and Bolts, Microsoft decided to restructure the studio to focus on the new Xbox Kinect. Kinect Sports, Rare and Microsoft's answer to Nintendo's Wii Sports, would be released in 2010 and be a commercial success, selling 3 million copies. This would be followed by Kinect 2 in 2011. Within the current console generation, Rare has developed a handful of other titles for the Xbox One. 2013 saw the revival of one of Rare's long dormant franchises, Killer Instinct. Released as a free-to-play game and co-developed by Double Helix Games and Iron Galaxy Studios, Killer Instinct was a critical success, particularly the second and third seasons receiving praise. Unfortunately, 2014's Kinect Sports Rivals would be a commercial failure and result in the laying off of 15 Rare employees. 2015 would be a milestone year for Rare, and the company would release Rare Replay in celebration of its 30-year anniversary, including 30 classic Rare titles such as Banjo-Kazooie, Perfect Dark, and Conker's Bad Fur Day. Rare Replay would be both a critical and commercial success, even reaching the number one spot in the UK charts. Also in 2015, several ex-Rare employees would form Platonic Games, releasing Ukulele, a spiritual successor to Banjo-Kazooie. Sadly, as of the recording of this video, Rare's latest release, Sea of Thieves, an open-world pirate-themed adventure, was released to mixed reviews, leaving many fans disappointed. Although many would argue today that Rare's greatest achievements are behind them, there's no denying their legacy as one of the most innovative developers in video game history. During the 90s in particular, Rare was on top of the gaming world, and there's no question that without their influence, gaming as a whole wouldn't be what it is today. Rare's commitment to excellence, although having waned in recent years, produced legendary titles like Donkey Kong Country, Banjo-Kazooie, and Goldeneye that revolutionized the industry. Rare's rich history, strong library of games, and propensity for innovation truly makes them a rare figure of gaming's past, present, and future. I want to thank everyone for watching this video. I have several other videos like this planned, including a history of Enix titles for the Super NES, and my next video which will be a top 10 list of my favorite games by none other than Rare. I have a ton of content on my channel, so I hope you'll check out some of my other stuff, such as my playthroughs of several Rare games, plus my previous video of my top 20 Super NES games of all time. Go check them out! I also hope you'll leave me a like and consider subscribing to my channel for more content like this in the future. Thank you everyone for all the support and love you guys give me. It really does mean so much to me, like, uh, sincerely from the bottom of my heart. Thank you. See you next time. Peace.